I've been using a 3D mouse now for about two years, and I love it. It's increased my efficiency when adding joints and constraints to assemblies and parts, as well as my efficiency when creating drawings, allowing me to zoom in and zoom out much more quickly than before. That being said, there are a few gripes I have, especially with the material. As you can see, the surface paint comes off over time, so you can see that it's kind of chipping away. And this is something that happens really after about a year of use. And the same thing can be said about the buttons. The buttons are rubberized and the rubber will wear away, but it doesn't affect really the functionality much, just the feel. Also, the base rotates on its own, which is a really big problem. So you need to find a workaround. Other than that, it's been very helpful to me. As you can see, I can rotate very easily my model, which is something I have to do all the time. But in addition to rotating just in this direction, you can also rotate in the other directions as well. So you can pull it back or push it forward and your model will react accordingly. And as you have guessed, you can also rotate your model to the left and right by pulling to the left and right side with the puck. Now, this is something that you kind of have to get a feel for and get used to, but over time you'll find it to be much easier than using a middle mouse button. And it's very much like riding a bike versus walking. It takes some time to learn how to ride a bike, but once you do, you see that it's much faster. And the other neat thing is that you can push your model either to the right or the left by sort of nudging and pushing the entire handle to either to the left or to the right. You can also pull your model towards you or push it away. So if you push forward, you can push your model away. And if you pull the puck towards you, you can pull it towards you. A lot of people that are watching right now are wondering about which 3D mouse style they should get. Now, they do have the Space Mouse Enterprise, and that one is the same exact thing as what I've shown, the Compact, it's the same exact one. It just happens to have a couple more buttons and a screen that can be programmed to your liking. Now, what you see on screen is one of the first versions of this, and I think it's important to show the rudimentary version that really the one of the earliest versions because all those buttons and the screen and all that functionality is really easy to emulate with um, a very cheap and easily you know findable breakout board and if you do this if you choose to use a breakout board instead of buying the more expensive enterprise version i think you can really save a lot of money um, even about $200. Um, I still do believe that the Compact is the best deal for this reason. So I'm going to show you a couple of breakout boards that I've seen online that you can use to place underneath your Compact when on your desk. And you can use these programmable boards uh, using your software instead of spending, you know, another 200 or more on the Enterprise or the larger version. So the first one I'm going to show you is this breakout board. This is a very simple uh, breakout board. And the thing I like about it is that the keys can be removed. So as you may know, a lot of mechanical keyboards have keys that can be taken out. And these keys can be switched with you know, whatever letter you want. So you can have a, a board like this with nine buttons and you can have an S on there. You click it and you have it mapped for sketch. You have a key bindings for sketch. You can have one for E and when you click on it, it goes to extrusion. And if you keep this underneath your compact uh, space mouse on your desk, I think it's a, it's a great tool to use to save some money and still have a really great setup. Also, um, it's still uh, very sophisticated, small. It's a, it's a little compact piece, while the uh, Enterprise has a lot of buttons you may never even use on it, and it takes up um, some more space. 
So that's the first one. Now, the second one is a little bit more expensive, uh, but I think it's also a great option. And that's this one, which has a lot of more, a lot more keys on it. And it has some other functionality, like these lights on the left side um, that I'm sure you can program uh, with, with uh, different key presses that you may have. Now, these are a lot of buttons, and you may only use maybe seven or eight of them at most. But if you want, you can, you can attach uh, key bindings for almost anything in CAD and just have it on these buttons. And this, if used correctly, may have even more functionality than a large version of the Space Mouse. It just may be a little bit more confusing to navigate. But the way I see it, if you can save, you know, 200 or more dollars or even $300 by buying one of these, maybe it's worth it. Um, you could find these online for 30 bucks, 40 bucks, depending on, on which one you want. And I think it's definitely um, something that should be considered uh, because it's, you know, it's completely customizable. Um, it's out of the way. A lot of these key devices are pretty small and they really just do the exact same thing. Uh, I think the screen is a little bit ridiculous and um, that's, that's something that a lot of people uh, think is really cool, but it's, it's really not necessary. Now, another thing that I've seen come up is a mouse with buttons on it. And these buttons, I'm sure, can be programmed. And when they're programmed, um, they can act as the drivers of a feature or some other, you know, sort of sketch function that you may want to use. And the thing is, if you use your left hand or your non-dominant hand for your 3D mouse, then it makes sense that you're going to use your other hand for your regular mouse, which you still need to use. The, the 3D mouse does not replace the right hand. Um, and so that mouse can just have some buttons uh, to be used for programming. I think the, the deluxe versions of this product, the 3D mouse, are a little bit um, unnecessary and overpriced, at least for hobbyist users. Um, the way I see it, you'll know if you need the deluxe version, the, the enterprise version. So for those that have been wondering, you know, I'm pretty sure you can get, get a, around with just the compact. And so the other one to look at is this. This one I think is a little bit overkill, honestly, but it does have a lot of usage, I think, in the, in the fact that um, this one has a lot of buttons, um, maybe too many. It, it depends on your preferences, but there's a lot of things that you can program here. You can have that large button for the minus. You can have that program to be, say, view change, you know, uh, previous view or next view, that type of thing. You can program your shift key to just be a regular shift key so that you don't even have to use a regular keyboard anymore. And this can be your keyboard for CAD. I mean, you already have your escape, you have your shift. If you want, you can program one of the buttons on the right to be enter, or you can, or one of the ones on the left side to be enter. So um, there's really a lot you can do with this, um, I think. And it, it kind of makes the enterprise unnecessary. And the last one I'm gonna show is this one. I thought that this was kind of a good in between from what we saw before. And as you can see, uh, it's the same deal as one of the earliest keyboards we saw. It has those mechanical switches, which can be swapped out. So if you want, you could buy keys for different colors if you really want to go that route. And you would still be saving a lot of money, even with buying this device. And uh, this is something I've been considering. Uh, the keyboard can be kind of annoying to, to search because you might have your keyboard um, inside a hutch in your desk or something and you don't want to pull it out every time you want to hit a key or it may be taking up a lot of room on your desk and so having one of these little breakout boards it might really be a great option. So hopefully uh, this sheds some light on the space mice, the different types and my experience after two years and like and subscribe for uh, more content just like this. Thank you.